Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video we're going to talk about the best .NET feature we're supposed to be getting but unfortunately we won't and that is green threads. Now if you don't know what green threads are, don't worry, I will explain it in this video and I will explain why it was so important and so exciting but it looks like we won't get it, well really ever. For now it's officially put on hold but we will see in this video why it was actually put on hold and if you read between the lines you'll understand that it basically can't be done for reasons I will explain in this video. If you don't know what green threads are, it's a very important concept to know, so please do watch the video to understand it because it is the async model of preference for many languages like Go, Kotlin, and so on. If you like our content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe for more training. Check out my courses on dometrain.com. Now, very quickly, before I move on, I'd like to let you know that we just added PayPal support on Dometrain. Many of you want to purchase courses, but you didn't want to use a credit or a debit card, and now you no longer have to. You can use your PayPal account to buy any of our courses. Now, to celebrate the launch of PayPal support, I'd like to offer the first 100 of you a 20% discount on any of our courses, not the bundles, just the courses. So click the link in the description and use the code PayPal to claim your discount. This promotion has actually been available already for our mail list. And if you want to be part of the mail list, go to Dom Train, scroll all the way down and just put your email on the text box and click send. I'm not going to spam you. I'm just giving this exclusive discount early. So if you want to purchase a course, you might want to hurry because people have been using this code already for some days now. All right, now back to the video. So let's take a look at this GitHub post to see exactly what happened. And just to remind you, more than a year ago, David Fowler made this tweet saying that today the team had a meeting about experimenting with a green threads implementation in .NET. Now, very quickly, what are green threads? Well, as David explains here, actually, they are threads the same way we have threads in C Shop, but they're managed by the runtime instead of the operating system because threads in, well, any language, traditional threads are OS threads, they're not runtime threads. Now, if you need a deeper explanation on this problem and why they're doing all this, there's this amazing blog post over here called What Color Is Your Function? I'm going to put a link in the description explaining exactly what the problem they're trying to solve is. But effectively, it's about how functions can be called and when you have an await async model, how that changes the whole dynamic of the language and can lead to many problems. Now back to the results, let's see what the team tried to do. So why green threads, right? Well, that's a great question because we already have a way to deal with asynchronous code in C Sharp, the await async model. So the whole point of asynchronous code is that when you have an IO bound operation, like a database call, a network call, a, a file system call, and so on, you don't want to just sit there and wait for that thread to finish the work. You want to say, okay, I'm doing this work, do it asynchronously, go do something else and come back here when this is ready. And we do have that with await async, that's the whole point. And there's some explanation about the performance improvement in terms of scalability of the application by using await async, because async code isn't necessarily faster. In fact, it's slower than synchronous code, but because you have this asynchronous nature, the app is able to do more things at the same time, and that leads to better scalable apps. The downside of the model that C Sharp has with await async, however, is that developers must decide which methods need to be async. And as David explains, it is not viable to simply make all methods in your program async because async methods do have lower performance and limitations on the types of operations that they can perform. For example, async methods can only be called by other async methods. And no, you should not be doing dot result or get a wait or get result. That defeats the whole purpose. Another thing is that you cannot actually use some of the most modern features of C Sharp and .NET, like spans, for example, in async code because of how the code is lowered and allocated. Now, the benefit or the promise of green threads was supposed to be that who can call what in terms of sync and async methods completely disappears in this new programming model. Green threads were supposed to be very, very cheap, so you can have thousands of them and your performance wouldn't really suffer. You would write code that would look synchronous, but it would scale in a way as an asynchronous code. Now, the biggest issue with introducing something like this in C Sharp is the fact that we already have a model to deal with that problem, the await async model. And the question is, okay, we can technically add green threads, but can they coexist with the await async model and all the problems that it brings? Well, let's take a look at what Microsoft did. So first, they actually prototyped the implementation. So they wrote the runtime code that supports this thing. And just as a reminder, this is what an async style method would look like. And this is what a green thread style code would look like. As you can see, there is no 
a as task call or anything or return or whatever. This is a sync method, but it actually does async IO under the covers. So you would write code like this dot write, no write async, no await, no nothing. And it would look like synchronous code, but behind the scenes, it would be async and very, very scalable. In my opinion, that's fantastic because it just looks so, so much simpler and easier to write. Now, if we compare the performance of these two implementations, as you can see, the await async version, 178,000 requests per second, the green threads, 162. So slower compared to await async, but keep in mind, await async has tons of years of optimizations on its back, and I'm pretty sure that green threads could be optimized to potentially match that performance. In fact, this is something that has been acknowledged in this comment over here. And at the end of the day, this was just a prototype. So for a prototype to perform so, so fast, I'm very hopeful they could actually optimize it. Now let's talk about the key challenges they found. And the biggest one is that this is a new async programming model in a language that already has one. So with the two of them coexisting, we could potentially have an issue. In fact, in the Keep Coding podcast, when I talked with David Fowler, we talked about this very problem. Because even today, you have people mess up things like dot get await or get a result or configure await or dot result. There's so many misunderstandings on a model that's supposed to be simple. So how is this going to make things any better? It won't. Also, there seemed to have been a great performance degradation between interoping with native code through green threads. For example, 100 million pinvoke calls changed from 300 milliseconds to 1.8 seconds running through a green thread, which isn't great. And it's very unlikely you are doing any of this, but Microsoft is doing quite a bit of this. So I can see why they would care about this because this would slow down the runtime. Now they do acknowledge that it's possible or even likely that they could make green threads and the model a bit faster than async in important scenarios. However, the challenge is that by making it faster in some scenarios, they could make it slower in other scenarios. So is that a risk they want to take given how fast the way they think is already? The the ultimate conclusion here is that they chose to actually put it on hold. In my opinion, it is scrapped and keep improving existing await async model for developing asynchronous code in .NET. And in my opinion, as much as I like the green threads model, I do think that they made the right decision because introducing an extra asynchronous model in the language that already has one could be catastrophic. Can you imagine what could happen in the spaghetti code we'd have to deal with when a code base uses both models? Also questions over when are you using one over the other, people rejecting the new model because they would say that it's slower than the old one and so on and so forth. So it would add tons of friction that we would not need in .NET and I'm happy they scrapped it as much as I loved the feature. But now I want to know from you, what do you think about all this? And is that something you had in your radar and hoped we would get in .NET? I really want to know. So leave a comment down below and let me know. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, keep coding.